So the V9 Blade 98 1619 has got to be my favorite blade in years. So in today's mega review, we're going to get some insight from a former ITF and WTA player, look back at the V7 and V8 blades, Here we compare go. the 1619 blade. to the 1820, and rank these new blades against some of the best 98 square inch options on the market. Looking back, I had one big problem with V8 blades, and that was lack of power. Now, I know these blades aren't supposed to be power rackets per se, but when you combine a 621RA, a 21 millimeter flat beam, and a 317 strung average swing weight, it makes it pretty tough to penetrate the court. And to me, that's what the blades always represented. They were a great way for advanced players to hit big, heavy shots without having to worry about customization. The blade was the quintessential middle ground between the pure drive, which anyone could hit huge with, and the heavy control-oriented players' rackets of the past, like the 6195. This meant combining a thin, control-oriented beam with a higher stiffness for power, combining a lower static weight for high swing speeds with a higher swing weight for great stability. The Blade 98 defined the modern player's frame, opening the door for the head speeds, the Onyx E-Zones, and the Battleblad Pure Strikes of the world. And then overnight, the V8 blade just lost its magic, leaning too much towards control and maneuverability. So to reclaim its identity and re-establish itself as the attacking weapon it became famous for, the V8 blade would need to make some critical changes. Stable Feel implements improved torsional stability directly into the layup of graphite. Often, improved torsional stability techs are just marketing speak for higher twist weights. However, I did notice much better torsional stability in the V9 blade, and I observed pretty minor changes in twist weight over the last three generations, though over the samples we had access to, it definitely did increase. Both V8 and V9 blades felt similarly muted in their responses, however, my friend Alex, a 4.0 player, a V8 user, said that he thought the V9 was even more muted than his trusty V8. To me, the most practical difference between the V8 and the V9 is average swing weight. Tennis Warehouse's averages are showing a buff from 317 up to 324. A seven point increase is definitely going to lead to more plow through on court with easier court penetration and improved stability. While the V9 16 by 19 clocks in at a 324 swing weight, the tighter patterned 1820 is pushing the scales at 330. The samples I tried, both strung with Alu Power Black 125, were even heavier, with the 16 main option hitting 327 and the 18 main going up to a whopping 338. Improved QC is supposed to be a big factor with these new blades, but as you can see, things still aren't exactly perfect. I have noticed they're injecting silicone in the handle or foam, depending on what kind of spec you get from the factory. So if you open the trap door, you never know what you're gonna get. 338 is going to be outside the comfortable range for a lot of players, me included. But that huge swing weight meant that when I had time, I felt almost invincible on court. But of course, the difference between swing weights isn't going to be a guarantee for the racket you try because of that QC. So how does a different string pattern affect the playability between these two models? Well, as you'd expect, the 1820 is more demanding. The launch angle is much lower, it's tough to loop defensive shots, and it should be noted that my racket of choice, the Slinko Whiteout 1820, is actually really similar in spec to the 1820 blade. But I still felt a lot more forced hit flat shots with the blade, especially with the 1820, whereas my Whiteout does give me better spin modulation, giving me more freedom in terms of shot selection. The 1619 does offer better access to spin than the 1820, but it still falls a little behind my Whiteout, though it does retain excellent control on slice and flat shots, making attacking tennis one of the default options for both string patterns in the blade. While the 1619 definitely suits my play style a little bit better, and if I had to switch to one of these blades, that would be the one. 
but the 1820 offers, I think, more of a unique identity with that higher swing weight and denser pattern. And that's the one I'd rather add to my collection as like a novelty hit from time to time. But what I really like about these two blades in comparison to the V8 especially is that both of them have more of a pro stocky kind of feel. They are solid, hefty, and rewarding to use, whereas the V8 just felt limiting, almost crippled from factory due to that measly weight. Do you want me to look at you or the camera? We didn't decide that. I ask you. My V7 allows for creativity. I can hit flat, I can hit top spin, I can maneuver the ball quite easily. Given that the 1619 pattern, it's very forgiven. Oh, you need forgiveness with your racket because you're gonna make mistakes and I made lots of mistakes. So my racket allowed me to win and allowed me to play even though I wasn't always perfect. Picking out the V9, I gotta say, I didn't feel the connection, the instant connection that I felt with the V7. I have lots of respect for the power shots that the V9 creates. If you're attacking the ball, if you're into the court, if you wanna, like if you wanna feel all the power of the racket, you have to force an attack. I didn't feel like my game satisfies just attacking all the time. I need to create the points, I need to rally, I need to feel the ball a little bit, create some spaces. And I don't think this racket allowed me to be as flexible with building the point. More or less, it was a forceful, a forceful attack all the time. When it comes to my serve, I gotta say, I tend to hit on the upper side of my strings. So if you if you find your, your sweet spot, I tend to go a little bit on the top side. And this racket could be the frame, it could be the tension, but in my case, I just didn't feel I could create that pop sensation and that like, aggressiveness with a first or even second serve with this racket. It just felt like it wasn't there, um, just maybe because of my contact point that was a little bit on top. But even if I can't feel comfortable on the serve, I can't feel comfortable on the rally, it takes a lot to get used to the, to the racket. For the next blade coming up, the V10, Wilson needs to spread out the weight. It needs to add a pop and needs to add that feeling of whip feeling of the v7 that feeling on this racket perfect the most special thing about these v9 blades by far is how well they attack the tip comes around surprisingly quick making it super easy to take that ball early. And taking balls on the rise with any racket requires a very rare combination of maneuverability and stability. And this is where that new torsional stability in the layup really comes to shine. With these new blades, I see this improved torsional stability much more as an attacking feature as opposed to a defensive feature. You would think that better stability is gonna help you defend more, and it does to some extent, but with the blade, it's so much better used to take that ball early and really close the net. Even the 1619 pattern, it feels so accurate, it's so precise, it fuels these deadly approach shots with some of the best offensive targeting that I've ever experienced in a racket. And once you do make it to net, it's like the world is your oyster. You have a choice. You can punch it deep, knife that ball through the court with a lot of pace, or you can take advantage of this super plush feel for like a nasty little dropper. In fact, I'd say this is also one of my favorite frames for hitting drop shots. The stability, the soft ball pocketing mean that it's just as easy to take off pace as it is to apply pace. Like all great attacking weapons, these new blades, they're not one trick ponies. They offer you variety. They let you choose how you want to drain your opponent's life force, lending themselves almost perfectly to all court attacking tennis. However, despite all of this attacking variety, I did feel forced to attack. I was forced to press my opponents and all of this forced aggression, while well, fun for meme tennis, for me, it just didn't connect fully with my play style. Okay, so 
Beckett doesn't really like the blades. Um, and I see where he's coming from. They do feel like out of the box. They're a little bit hard to find depth and power with on a consistent basis. I really struggled to figure out this blade. Usually when I try a new racket, having tried so many by now, I can really find my rally ball within just a couple minutes, like with the new speed, the strikes. I just grooved. But this new blade took me several hitting sessions to find my way. The first string setup I tried with the Toro line strings, those were completely wrong for this frame. It wasn't until I got Alu Power in the blades that I started to understand the magic. Going back to Ali's V7, it's a rack that I felt so much more comfortable using. The hitting feel is so much more raw, it's immensely easy to modulate that spin that more classic feel. The feedback is more direct and it just molds itself to your style. The V9 is more limiting, though it definitely feels more stable, more solid. The power comes easier with the new version for sure, but the frame just wouldn't jive with my play style. It feels like there's a ton of weight just above the throat, kind of in these lower shoulders out wide. And that weight distribution felt like it forced me to adapt my swing path to a more linear driving motion, going for like a less extreme grip. Not quite going all the way to Eastern, but like maybe an extreme Eastern or like a very mild semi-Western. And you know, you might say that's a good thing for you, Beckett. You just lean back and hit up the back of the ball like a stupid idiot. Well, that may be true, but does not feel comfortable to me. It's not the kind of tennis that I feel good about playing. And if you ever tried like the Pure Aero 98, it kind of feels like that racket. It feels like there's a right way to use the Pure Aero 98, and it definitely feels like there's a right way to use this new blade. The benefit of that is it makes it super easy to recommend this racket to different players. If you're an aggressive baseline or an all court player who likes to rip slightly flatter shots that really drive through the court, I think the blade is really one of the best choices in the world. They kind of remind me of the Percept that we tried that we both didn't really like. However, I do think that these are a step up from the Percept in that they're both point and shoot rackets. I feel like with either generation on my hand, I can pick where I'm swinging and hit it to a pretty specific spot, which isn't always the case with a lot of rackets. Like my Pure Aero 98, I don't have that confidence that I'm going to be able to precisely shoot to a target in the same way that I do with these. And um, for that reason, I do really like them. But if you got a full Western grip or even like an extreme semi, it's pretty hard to recommend. And I think you're gonna have a lot more success with the Slinko Whiteout or even the Ezo 98. But if players like Federer, Tsitsipas, Ash Barty, Anjabur, if those people are your heroes, those are the players you emulate, I think you're gonna absolutely love this blade. So as I said earlier, these new blades can be pretty finicky with strings. I think stiffer, more lively, crisper strings are definitely the way to go. Options from like Luxlon or Grapple Snake I think would play great. So would Turna Silver 7 Tour, Lynx Tour, Tour Bite. And I definitely caution away from softer, more muted strings like offerings from Toro Line, Yonex Poly Tour Pro, or even Hyper G Soft. I just realized Restring Sync actually comes out today and I think it would pair perfectly with the blade. It's just like Alu Power. Okay, feel not quite all the way there, but it lasts way longer. It's stiffer, crisper, and the spin is amazing. Super connected. I think that would be a really S tier choice for these new blades. I imagine like multi or gut mains would also play great in this frame, but again, I would go for something a little more lively, a little stiffer like X1 Biphase or something from Technofiber. <laughs> To me, finally, this blade now sits towards the top of the heap when it comes to these attack-oriented modern players' frames, eclipsing even my former champ for flat hitters in the Radical MP, though leaning maybe a little bit more, even more towards advanced 4.0 plus players than the previous version. You know, overall, I think both of these are great, and I think this one is better than this one because I like the paint job a little bit better. It's hard to distinguish, guys. These are pretty much uh, a paint job away from being the exact same racket, but overall, 
I think they're great, actually. That said, there are still tons of frames that I would way rather use than this plate for my game. There are lots of rankets out there that are similar in spec, but offer a lot better spin modulation, help you play loopy defense, including the Percept 97 and the Dunlop CX200. But if you attack relentlessly, you pressure your opponent at every opportunity using variety, placement, and power to claw your way forward, I think the V9 blade is as sharp as it's ever been. And here is where the blade stands in comparison to the other 98 square inch options on the market. And since I think the blade leans a little more to advanced users, I've also included a new chart that compares some of the heavier player sticks with a little bit more options for smaller head sizes. And if you think the blade would be a great fit for your tennis, we've also got affiliate links to Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, and Tennis Only in the description. Let me know if you have got any questions about these new blades or anything else in the comments section. And thanks so much for watching.